Up at the top B, this is a glycolipid. I know that because I have the fatty acid tail and then a sugar that's attached. C is a glycoprotein. This is the protein portion. This is the glyco portion. So D is a carbohydrate. H is a, the cell's exterior, or maybe you said um, extracellular fluid. I would be the cell's interior. And again, maybe you said cytoplasm. E, oops, E is the cholesterol. F is a peripheral protein. Um, G is a channel protein. A is a phospholipid with A1 being the phosphate head, or maybe you put hydrophilic head, and A2 being the lipid tail, the fatty acid tail, the hydrophobic tail, any of those things. The next one, um, this one I see the vesicles coming from inside, fusing with the outside, and releasing its contents. So this one's going to be exocytosis. This one is engulfing some bacterium and bringing it in. So it's a form of endocytosis. And because this is a large molecule that is going to be digested, I would specifically call it phagocytosis, P-H-A-G-O, phagocytosis, as it's a form of cell eating. This is much smaller molecules, perhaps liquids. Again, I see it coming to the inside. So this is pinocytosis, pino, P-I-N-O. And these have receptor proteins attached on the surface. So I know that this is cell mediated or receptor mediated endocytosis. So all three of these were examples of endocytosis. Here, these are all three going from high to low concentration. So these are all examples of passive transport. This does not use any protein, so it's simple diffusion. These both use proteins, so they're facilitated diffusion. This one, I'm looking at these squares, diamonds, and there's not very many here, and there's you're taking them and you're pushing them in to where there's a lot and vice versa. There's not very many of these circles inside and I'm pushing them out to where there's already a lot. So that's going to be active transport. And you would also talk about it um, using ATP energy. So when you see graphics in a, in a, pic, in a multiple choice question or in a FRQ, I try to interpret my pictures before I ever even start. And for any of the concepts we cover, you should be able to create an image of it. Your brain likes pictures, so it helps you internalize information and make sense of information. This is receptor-mediated um, endocytosis. So you would talk about what's happening here. So um, there must be some sort of ligand, maybe these green, items are ligand that bind with receptor proteins, which cause proteins to gather at the surface, causing an indentation or invagination of the membrane, which encapsulates, creates a vesicle or vacuole, a vesicle um, of the particles that were outside. Here I can see perhaps it's fusing with a lysosome and those digestive enzymes will be released to break down whatever was inside, is what I see in this particular example. Okay. What questions do you have on those? Any questions on those? So reviewing concepts, um, getting some ideas on what we should do when we approach questions, Decide what you already know about the topic before you ever look at the answers. And also a way of studying concepts, draw pictures out, um, be able to talk about those pictures. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about water potential. And you guys already have these slides up, I see, so nice job. I included a student version. Um, if you want, it's up to you. Keep it, don't keep it. 
Um, my thought is if, if you were struggling to take notes during lectures, that might guide you, but you can also use it after the lecture to see if you can remember um, what we talked about. So it, you can kind of use it as a study tool after the fact. So um, when we're talking about water potential, we're talking about water's tendency to move from one location to another. So just like things move from a high concentration to a low concentration in diffusion, things moved from a high potential to a low potential. Things move from a high pressure to a low pressure, a high temperature to a low temperature. It's like to, in order for two things to be equal, you always are gonna have to go from high to low, right? If we go from low to high, we only increase the gradient, increase the difference. So everything's gonna go um, from high to low. So water, with a high potential is likely to move. Low potential, not so much. And when we're talking about water movement, we're not so much talking about like the bulk movement in that case, um, but it's really important that we understand the movement of water between um, environments and cells and um, between different compartments of our body. Since it does make up a good amount of our tissue, 70 to 75 percent of our body weight is water. So it's really important to understand how that water moves um, and what's controlling the movement of the water. So really the concentration of solutes is going to affect the movement of the water and that's what you guys, um, you've already been um, introduced to this in the video. So we use the Greek letter psi um, and that is the symbol for water pressure or water potential. And it's a unit of energy. So it can be calculated by finding the sum, the addition of pressure potential and solute potential. So you notice I'm using psi for all of these to represent the potentials and then a subscript to represent what type of um, potential. So your formula, you should be able to calculate and you'll see this on the um, AP class um, formula sheet. So you don't have to have it memorized. It used to be we had to memorize it, now you don't. But everything is in comparison to distilled water. So you take pure water and you give it a relative water potential of zero. So that's as high as you get. Um, plant cells, their cell wall adds a pressure potential. Animal cells do not have cell walls our cell membranes are flexible, and so our cells don't add a pressure potential. So when placed in your um, distilled water, initially this cell is gonna have a pressure potential of zero, but it has a lot of solutes in it. So it has a solute potential of maybe negative two, and so together they make a water potential of negative two. After it's sat for some time, water's gonna come in and begin to dilute the solute, which is going to also expand the cell, putting pressure on the cell walls. So when water potential is at zero, you would assume these two have an equal tendency to move and therefore the cell is at equilibrium. That doesn't mean water's gonna stop moving. It can move, but it's gonna move like an equal amount on both sides. So at this point, we've canceled um, the solute potential with the pressure potential. Okay, open containers, if you're working with a dialysis tubing or an open beaker, or you're gonna see, I um, can't think of what they're called. They have a little bell at the bottom and the tube going up the top. Um, anyways, those are all open containers. And so they have a pressure potential of zero. So when calculating water potential, the only thing that is a factor is the solutes. Okay, so movement of water into a plant will exert pressure on the cell wall and increase the pressure potential. And that's what we saw here. <clears throat> so what do I want here? So pure water has, um, a solute potential of zero because it has no solutes in it, right? So it has a very high tendency to move. So water will move into most cells. As solute is added, the solute potential becomes more negative. And that causes water potential to decrease also. So 
I think this is tricky because you're talking in negative numbers. So if you're comparing a water potential of negative two and a water potential of negative four, which one has the greater water potential? Is it gonna, it's the negative two. So that's why that I think that's tricky because four, the in you know the integer itself is a higher number, but um, as far as the value, negative two is greater than negative four. So that is what I think is confusing about this when you're comparing negative numbers. So any solute you add, solutes suck. Solutes attract water to them, so that's going to decrease the water potential because water is less likely to move away from its solutes. So be well familiar with um, how solute potential is calculated. So you saw negative CIRT. So most of this is pretty easy. Concentration is in molarity. Remember that's moles per liter. I put in a reference sheet. Those of us who maybe haven't had chemistry um, or need a review of chemistry, I put a molarity sheet in there to help you review that concept. Um, the tricky part of this one is the I, the ionizing constant, or I keep saying constant, but it's not, the ionizing number. So that's the number of molecules that the substance will split into when placed in water. And really, the only ones you have to worry about are ionic compounds. Covalent compounds won't break apart into smaller, like they won't break apart into their atoms or smaller molecules after they get to their monomer. Um, so all covalent molecules have a ionizing number of one. So sucrose isn't gonna break apart into sugar, sugar. It's not, it's gonna stay as sucrose. So that will be ionizing one. But NaCl breaks apart into sodium and chloride because it's ionic. So the water will pull those two apart. They're both polar, right? Um, so that has an ionizing number of two. Or if you had magnesium chloride, MgCl2, that's gonna break apart into MgCl and Cl. So that's gonna have an ionizing number of three. Mostly we're working with um, covalent molecules because it's a biological system. So mostly we're only going to be using ionizing numbers of one, but sometimes you'll get that ionic compound. So you have a different ionizing number. The pressure constant is 0 0.0831 liter bars per mole Kelvin. And really the purpose of that is to cancel out all your other um, units. And then the absolute temperature is in Kelvin. So you have to convert Celsius to Kelvin. If you were given a Fahrenheit temperature, like 70 degrees, you'd have to calculate that into Celsius first in order to use this. So um, we're gonna add 273 to a Celsius number to make it um, Kelvin. So here's an example if you could try this out on your own. Um, you have a molar concentration of a sugar solution in an open beaker has been determined to be 0 0.4 molars. So I know my concentration. I also know my pressure potential. Calculate the solute potential at 27 degrees. Pay attention. They will always tell you to what place they want you to round a number. So then in the bubble sheets on your answers come May, it's going to go to that, only that number. So how would you calculate this? Start with your formula. We're solving for solute potential. It's always a negative potential, so we start with a negative number because it's taking away from water's potential to move. Okay, concentration, my 0.4 molars. R is a constant, 0 0.0831. Temperature 27, but to make it Kelvin, we're gonna add 273. So your formula should look like this. Don't forget your negative out in front. So when I calculate that out, I have negative 9.97 bar. Bars are my pressure unit. Any questions on that? So biological systems, lots of different factors play a role, that's why there's so many um, components to that formula. So as you increase solutes, you're going to decrease water's potential. 
So like if you think of sea salt or salt in a living cell, that's gonna pull water out, right? It's gonna draw water to the salt because the salt is a salute. Um, so an increase in pressure will also increase water potential and that makes sense because if you think of pressure as a squeezing force, you're gonna push water away, aren't you? So increasing pressure increases the water potential. That's the positive part, the positive component of that formula. So this is especially important in plant cells because of those cell walls. As water fills, it's gonna press against the walls and create pressure. So um, some words we can use, plasmolysized. In a plant cell, you would refer to plasmolysized. In an animal cell, you would say um, crenated. It means that all of the cytoplasm has come out of it and it shriveled up. So in this case, the cell wall, um, the membrane falls away from the cell wall. That's when your plants get limp and you're like, oh my gosh, my plant needs water. So you can see in a hypertonic, lots of salute, lots of tonicity. Tonicity is pulling strength. So this says it has a lot of pulling strength, which means it has a lot of salutes. So that's gonna pull water towards it. Water will leave the cell. Isotonic iso is the same, like an isosceles triangle or isometric exercise. Um, so we're gonna have equal movement of water. It doesn't stop moving. You just don't have a net gain on one side or the other. Um, so this is a slightly limp um, cell and you would refer to it as flaccid. And then turgid means it has a lot of pressure. You refer to that pressure against the cell wall as turgor pressure. So we're, we're building a vocabulary here. So pressing against the cell wall, you're increasing the turgor press pressure and the cell is turgid. Okay, so hypotonic, low tonicity, low pulling strength, water moves away from a hypotonic solution. So it moves into the cell in this case. So pressure is usually positive because of that cell wall. In a plasmolysized cell like this, the pressure is nearly zero. So that central vacuole that is only in the plant cells fills with water, that's exerting the pressure against the walls that I refer to as turgor. So this cell doesn't, or these cells, they're just slightly limp. I might call this flaccid. So it needs more water to perk it up, basically, right? So if um, so, it has a low water potential, so water will move into the plant, causing its cells to fill with water, and notice the difference in the leaves now that those cells have turgor pressure. Okay. Um, then the negative pressure in a plant is actually what causes water to move through a plant. Um, and you should be able to talk about that. So um, we have two different vessels in plants, like you have blood vessels, they have xylem and phloem. So xylem moves um, water or liquids through a plant. And they can withstand a negative pressure, um, which is important for moving water because you're gonna constantly go from a high to a low. So um, like in your leaves, water is being evaporated from the plant, which is causing a negative um, pressure potential. Because the water's coming out, it's, become, it's getting more concentrated, right? So water will move from the stems to the leaves. And as water moves, it's creating a more negative pressure in that location. So water will move up through a plant because it is increasingly negative until you get to the leaves. It doesn't, a lot of times kids want to answer that question like, um, because the plant needs water to live. But that's not talking about the scientific principle that's causing the water to move. And that's what we're always trying to get to, the principle. Um, so you have xylem, which carries water and minerals from the roots. And you also have phloem, which carries the food. They have a f sound, both of them. That's how I always remembered them. This is your glucose. So you should be able to work with water potential. I'm going to give you a few practice problems today. You should be able to calculate salute potential, which is also called osmotic potential or osmotic pressure. 
So use those words interchangeably. Different resources may say osmotic rather than salute. So remember that salute potential decreases water's tendency to move because water is attracted to salute. So it's not going to move away from, it's going to move toward it. Pressure potential increases water's tendency to move like a pressing force. Should be able to work with the salute potential formula and explain each of the components. Disassociating is the only thing that can be tricky, but mostly we use covalent molecules, so it shouldn't be too tricky. Remember to convert to K by adding 273. What questions do you have? So um, I was gonna have us do this worksheet um, together, but then I, added on the review piece. So um, you can either stay on the Zoom and we can do this worksheet together or you can do this one on your own. But wait, I wanna show you what you're gonna do Wednesday, okay? So Wednesday, um, we need to do a lab. And as you know, labs can be very difficult. So I've created the best I could lab for you. Um, before Wednesday, you want to do the extra um, work. So Bozeman Video will always have a video on each of the mandated labs. Pearson's Lab Bench also has a walkthrough. So there's like a little tutorial and it takes you through a dry lab and then it has some quiz questions at the end. So do those before Wednesday um, just for yourself for understanding. So Wednesday, I will have my Zoom open in case you need help with the lab. But um, that's basically it. You don't actually have to physically do it. You just have to work with the numbers that I provided you. Okay. Any questions on the lab? I also put in Google Classroom just resources um, to help you with content. Water potential resources. So that's nothing you have to turn in for me. It's just something, they're just things for you to um, view on your own, okay? So we're turning in membranes, this worksheet, and the rainbow is Wednesday, okay? So you can stick around and do water potential problems with me, or you can take off, whichever you prefer. A plant cell, when initially placed in pure water, so I know when I'm reading this, like if I was talking the text, I'd say pure water, I know right off the bat that that's a zero water potential. It has a solute potential of negative four bars and a pressure potential of negative two bars. So I would wanna circle that information because that's gonna be important. So the plant cell has a negative four pressure or solute and a plus two bars. So in order to determine which way the water will move, I'll have to figure out the water potential for both sides. Correct? Water potential for pure water is zero. What is the water potential for the plant? Negative two. Yes, negative four plus two is negative two. So if water moves from its high to its low potential, we have zero versus negative two. Zero is higher, so it's gonna to move towards the zero. So is that into or out of the cell? Out of the cell. So when will water stop moving? Never really. But um, once the water potentials are equal, so at equilibrium, um, when they both have the same water potential, there shouldn't be any net movement between the two. So assuming, um, so you would have when the water potential is zero, basically. So in that case, it would have to add um, two bars of pressure in order to get it to zero. When equilibrium is reached, oh, I kind of just did that. What are the cell's solute potential and pressure potential values? So the solute potential doesn't change, but the pressure potential does. So what will you need in order to cancel out the solute potential? The solute potential doesn't change. It's going to remain at negative four. So a water potential, what plus negative four equals zero? The pressure potential is gonna to have to be four. Mm -hmm. 
So as the water comes in, it's adding that turgidity, right? It's adding that turgor pressure, which increases the pressure potential. A protozoan is um, like a unicellular water dwelling organism. They are more like animals than they are plants. They don't have cell walls, they have cell membranes. So Ms. Snook, she always goes like this to see her stuff. Um, so it's placed in a 0.5 molar sucrose solution at 27 degrees Celsius. Assume the cell has a cell potential of negative two. So the cell already has a negative two um, cell potential. Because it doesn't have a cell wall, its pressure potential, remember, is going to be zero. So it cannot generate trigger pressure and will always have a pressure potential of zero bars. When the cell is placed in the sucrose solution, which way will water move? So to solve that, I'm gonna to have to first calculate the solute potential of the protozoan. So does somebody wanna calculate what solute potential would be at a 0.5 molar and 27 degrees Celsius? Point five times point zero. Oops. Point five times point zero eight three one times two seventy three plus what? Two seventy three and two twenty seven is three hundred. So times 300, did you get negative 12.465? Okay. Yeah. I don't do well up in front when I do math. Okay, so that's a pretty high solute potential, negative 12.465. Um, so that is going to, let's see, what am I compared to? The solute is, much greater outside the cell than inside the cell. So water will move out. Would you agree with that? And water will stop moving when they reach equilibrium. Since you're not going to be um, increasing the pressure, you're going to basically be diluting the external environment by water. Assume the cell has a cell potential of negative two bars. So we're going negative, we're going 12 to negative two, right? So wouldn't, when will they be equal? Negative 12 is coming towards the negative two. There's a difference of five. Will they, will it gain five and lose five? So negative seven. Since we don't change its pressure potential. So the plant cells, they're a little bit easier to work with because they have that trigger pressure that equals zero. Um, has a rigid cell wall placed in 0.2, so kind of the same thing. So we already calculated, no, that was 0.5. So 0.2, gotta calculate that out. 0.2 times 0 0.0831 times 300 again. 4.98, let's call it negative five. I always have to draw these out to make sense of them. Yes? The plug in. Okay. Um, so to calculate solute potential, you have negative times concentration times ionizing number, which is one in this case. Oh, no, it's not. NaCl, Miss Snook. That's a two. Good catch. See if I write, write down it. Okay, so I'm gonna write my formula, negative um, I-C-R-T. So on number three, the I for salt, because that will deionize, is two. The concentration C is 0 0.2. R is a constant, it doesn't change, 0 0.0831. And T is going to be the temperature in Kelvin. So I have to do 27 plus 273. So that's going to be 300. 
So now my formula would say negative two times 0 0.02 times 0 0.0831 times 300. So I got 9.972 when I, I did 0 0.2 times two times 0 0.0831 times 300. Did you get nine, negative 9.972 for the salute potential? So I like to draw myself a graphic. So I have a beaker. I'm drawing a beaker. And I'm going to put a little potato cell or some kind of plant cell inside. So the 0.2 solution I know has a negative, I'm going to just round it off to 10 salute potential. And it's in an open container, which means it's it's plus zero bars, so it also has a negative 10 water potential. And inside, osmotic potential refers to solute potential. So inside the potato, I have, again, start with your formula, negative ICRT. So um, we're looking at um, an ionizing of one. So negative one times... Wait, they've already calculated it. The osmotic potential is negative eight. And then pressure potential is plus two. So water potential is salute plus pressure. So it's negative eight plus two. So it has a negative six pressure or water potential. So for it to be um, at equilibrium, since neither of these two are pure water, neither side is going to get to be a zero water potential. So you would kind of, you would see where will they meet at, in the middle, right? Because you're going to come between the two. So if it's going between negative six and negative 10, they will be equal at negative eight. Does that make sense? Coming and going. So if its salute potential doesn't change, its salute potential remains a negative eight. So that means in order to be at a negative eight for pressure water potential, the pressure potential would have to be zero. Does that make sense? That does not make sense. Oh yeah, water's going out. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> Did you understand number three? It would probably be better if I was actually writing. I got to get a, a something I can write on. So what about this one? Salt is the primary ingredient used in meat curing. Doing this requires a concentration of salt of nearly 20%. How does sugar or salt curing preserve meat? The percentage doesn't matter. The idea that salt is going to draw water toward it. Um, any microorganisms that might be in that meat, which would cause that meat to go bad, the salt will draw the water out because it's hypertonic. Salt is almost always going to draw water out. Water is attracted to salt. So, um, the microorganisms that might be in that meat will lose water and therefore won't be able to carry on life processes. So it will rid the meat of bacteria. And then the same kind of concept is true here with fertilizer. Like some fertilizer is good because you're adding nutrients to the soil, but too much fertilizer, basically you're adding salutes and you're decreasing the um, water potential of the soil. So by decreasing the water potential of the soil, you're making it so water will be drawn out of the plant and then it will not have the water it needs to carry on life processes. I need to have that typed up, I, I realize. That would be better for like showing you how to do it. 
or I guess I could have made a copy. I'm so dumb sometimes. I could have just made a copy and wrote on it. Oh, Miss Snook. Okay, can I, can I answer any other questions on that? Go back to something, anything you've done over the last few days? Um, I'm kind of confused about three still, like which number is supposed to be what right now? Okay. So, um, this is number three, 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 okay. So we decided this was the negative uh, 10 and negative six one, correct? Because I have a bunch of notes. So water was going to move out of the cell or into the beaker, however you want to call it. Um, the cell's water potential at equilibrium is going to be negative eight. That is where negative 10 and negative six, in order for them to be equal, one's gonna lose water, making it more concentrated, and one is going to gain water, making it less concentrated. So the point where the two will be equal is the number in between the two. So that's gonna be negative eight. The cell's solute potential does not change. So the solute potential will remain um, negative eight bars. So if the water potential is negative eight and the solute potential is negative eight, and I calculate water potential by saying solute plus pressure potentials, the only thing, so what plus negative eight is going to equal negative eight? Zero. So by um, losing water, the pressure against the cell walls has decreased. So it's gone down and that's zero. So does that make sense? Yeah, that helped a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I now realize that I should have been typing things in as I went. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm still learning this whole presentation business. Do you want me to go back to other ones? I remember um, doing some work and uh, I had questions and now I'm trying to find what that was. Okay. What did we decide on the protozoan? Did water move out or in? Out. Thank you. Oh yeah, it shriveled up. Thank you. It's gonna really annoy me that I can't find what it was I needed help on. I remember writing down a comment and something I did and I totally forgot what it was. So if it comes up again, I'll let you know. Okay. I have to find where I wrote this, I don't think I did write it. Thanks for your help, Ms. Snook. Yes, you're welcome. I'm like, I have to recalculate this one because I didn't write it down. This one is negative five. It's the solute potential or molarity, 27 degrees. Sal has solute of negative two plus zero. So it's going to be negative two versus, was this the 12.45? Yeah. I want 12.45. I want an even number. <laughs> what would be the, so negative two, negative 12. I'm gonna round it off to negative 12. So they have a difference of 10. So one's gonna go down five and one's gonna go up five. So negative seven.
Let's have a little potential negative four. Make them reach for the cell potential. Cell potential of plant cell. Negative four pressure, negative two, plus two. Negative four doesn't change. So it's going to have to be a positive four to equal zero. Turn in the AP bio membrane slides review. Yeah, that one in this one. Yep, and then you're all set. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. When it it was this like it cancels each other out. That five, like that. So that has to do with plant cells. So like this um this example here with the plant cells. Um, so for something to be at equilibrium the water is no longer moving, right? So, um, so you would, because this was an example where you had pure water, so the pure water has a solute potential of zero and a pressure potential of zero. Um, and if water is the only thing that we're looking at moving, it doesn't matter how much water moves into or out of the cell, this pure water is gonna remain pure water. So in this case, water potential has to equal zero, Yeah. right? So yes. for them to be at equilibrium, the pressure of the, or the water potential of the plant cell also has to be at zero, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because you're not adding solutes over here. So um, if the solute potential isn't changing, because it still has the same amount of molecules in there, right? So in a plant cell, I'm gonna keep my solute potential the same. Solute plus pressure equals the water's potential. I said I need the water potential to be the same as outside, which is zero. So that means pressure plus solute must equal zero. If solute doesn't change, the only thing that is changing is pressure. So what plus two is going to equal, I'm sorry, negative four was the solute. So what plus negative four is going to equal zero four right okay so and because because my outside is zero mm -hmm. and then the animal cells don't have that pressure potential yeah so that's going to be a different situation so in this case um and like neither side is pure water so you don't you're not looking at a zero water potential to begin with um so in this the So the water potential was a negative two inside and a negative, no. One side was like negative 12 and one side was negative yeah, two. Yeah, that's what I got. I got the negative 12. Okay. The solute potential of the cell is negative two and out here was negative 12, right? Mm -hmm. So in order for them to be equal, they have to have the same, or at yeah, equilibrium, they have to have the same solute potential or water potential, because we're talking about water movement. So as water, um, we determined water is going to go out of the cell. So that's going to decrease um, the water potential here. The more it goes, the less will go. Mm -hmm. Because this is getting greater and greater concentrated, right? So the solute potential technically is going up. Mm -hmm. And vice versa out here, as you're adding water to the external environment, it's becoming diluted, which mm -hmm. is increasing its water potential. Yeah. So in this case, where will the two be equal? So if I have a negative 12 and negative 10, I'm sorry, negative two, 12's becoming diluted, coming down, two's becoming concentrated, moving up. So when will the two be equal? 
somewhere in between the two. Yeah. So the difference of the, between the 12 and the two is 10. So they're each going to move five. So they'll be equal equilibrium when both sides are at negative seven. Negative two came up to negative seven. Negative 12 went to negative two. Of negative seven. I have my hands wrong. Wait, I'm confused. Well, would be the bottom it, number. If it's at negative two bars, isn't it going up to seven? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I had my, no, yeah. it's going, um, because negative two and negative seven is like technically going down. Oh, okay. So like negative two and then negative 12? Yeah. Okay. That's where I said my hands were wrong. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And that's what I say is tricky about this is talking in negative numbers. Mm -hmm. Like a greater solute potential is actually a lower number mm -hmm. because it's a negative potential. That's what I was getting. That's what I was thinking. So a negative solute potential has a greater, what did you say? Well, um, I, I'm always picturing a graph when I yeah. do this and I'm thinking of negative numbers like that. Mm -hmm. So the greater the solute potential, because the solute potential is a negative number, mm -hmm. it's a lower number. Okay. It's hard to say that. Yeah. Good. Because it's like, that's a lower water potential because the lower I go with solute, the less tendency the water will move, but mm -hmm. solute's tendency to move would increase. So for the solute potential, it's a greater solute potential. Oh, okay, yeah. But we're just talking about the movement of water. Of water. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I get this now. I just have to pay more attention to when it's a animal cell and when it's a plant cell. Yeah. Yeah, and for me, like, rather than saying greater and lesser, I try to say more or less negative <laughs> because I think it, it's confusing to say it has a greater solute potential or a lower solute potential. So I say the solute potential becomes more negative or the solute potential becomes less negative. Okay. Yeah. I'll probably have, like, maybe a couple more questions tomorrow, like, a different day. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm good now. Okay. Super. Goodbye. Wait, Keep what? Oh. oh, my brother. So my dad is in from, um, my dad is in from Georgia. So mm -hmm. he needed a vehicle. So I told him he could drive my car. So then my brother and my dad went to visit my uncle and my brother was driving. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. That is bad. What did he hit? Another car. Oh. Yeah, that's my windshield. And like the oh. airbags were deployed. Yeah. I don't know. Is it total? I don't know because it happened last night. So now now I have to call the insurance company and, and whatnot. I'm sorry to hear that. I know that's my so day just got so good. Yeah. <laughs> your Monday. But it can only go up from here. Right. Yeah. Like water potential. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm really sorry to hear that. I hope everything. It's all right. Goes. Yeah, it will. I have insurance, so. Okay. It'll get solved. We'll get some. Yeah. Right. See you again. Okay. See thanks, you. son. Bye.